Hi, I'm Ken David. This virus that's going around, it's real. It is real. I mean, people are dying. Okay. So, it's kind of like collateral damage, right? Every other virus we've ever had did not close down our entire country. This has a 98% recovery rate. So, what is the media talking about? I, I, I don't get it, but let me show you a few things, okay? A couple of things, anyway. The hospitals that Cuomo says are overflowing with people. It's Armageddon. <laughs> they blame the man for everything. Earthquakes, Trump's fault, tornado, it's Trump, hurricanes, Trump's fault. Trump didn't do enough to help Puerto Rico. Then they find out Democrats stole all the money, they stashed away all the stuff that we sent them. <laughs> They're ridiculous, okay? Now it's a virus, a virus, okay? that we've had hundreds of times before. We will get through this. And I'm not saying that we, it's a good idea to stay at home. It's a, it's a good idea. So stay at home, okay? Stay away from people and we'll just burn this thing out. And that, it's a good idea, but you what? They will blame Trump for the crash of the economy when this is all over. Okay, you watch. But in the meanwhile, we're dealing with the end of the world. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I, I just don't think so. Here is a couple of videos that show you exactly how overrun all the hospitals in New York are. Queens, Mount Sinai, Queens, they say, well, they, they, they'll tell you, we don't have enough room. We need a ship. We got to turn, we have to turn the, the, the convention center, the Javits Center, whatever it's called, into a hospital. They show the videos. No one is there. They got nobody. Nobody anywhere. Just watch. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, this is Todd Starnes, and uh, this is here in my downtown Brooklyn neighborhood. You know, they've been telling us uh, on the news and uh, the Democrat leaders have been telling us that the hospitals here in New York City have been turned into war zones. And I thought it would be good to get out today and to show you what's happening, at least in my neighborhood. Now, again, uh, this is not to diminish uh, the virus uh, or the crisis at all. This is just simply to explain to you what we are actually seeing in reality compared to what we are seeing on the television and what the uh, the Democrats in charge are telling us. So look, this is outside of our hospital uh, here in Brooklyn. This hospital serves thousands and thousands of people. Now, this is the line to get tested for the coronavirus right here. This is where the line starts. And folks, I'm here to tell you at this very moment, not a single person is in line waiting to get tested. This is the emergency room. And you would expect, if you believe the mainstream media, that this emergency room would be overflowing with people. And as you can tell, there are no people here. Now again, this is not to say that uh, this situation could change, but I'm telling you right now, this is what's really going on in New York City here in Brooklyn. So this is the hospital, so let's go around and let's see if there's anything happening at the front of the hospital. 
But folks, this is what really aggravates me. Yes, this virus is a serious issue, but the reality is I'm afraid that the mainstream media has been overblowing the coverage here. There's been a lot of fear mongering going on and that is unacceptable. So this is the front of the hospital. And as you can see, there are not thousands of people trying to get into the hospital as the mainstream media has been telling us. And it seems to be fairly quiet out here for the time being. So folks, I just want you guys to get an idea. We're gonna be going to another hospital in the neighborhood just momentarily, but I wanna give you an idea of what's happening here at the Brooklyn Hospital Center here in New York City. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what the mainstream media ought to be doing. We are an opinion radio show, but today we're becoming journalists so that we can present you the facts that you need. And it's pretty shameful what the mainstream media is doing, and it's absolutely unacceptable. So I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, why is an entire city of 8 million people on lockdown and there's nobody in line waiting to get tested? Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? That's a question that we're going to get an answer to. I can promise you that. All right, this is Todd Starnes uh, signing off from here in downtown Brooklyn. Folks, do me a favor. I want you to share this video and let people know what's really going on here in New York City. And here's a picture of the New Orleans Convention Center. As you can see, it's overflowing. <laughs> anyway... I'm Ken David, signing off. Have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen. Together we are tackling this disease. And I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. I hope in the years to come, everyone will be able to take pride in how they responded to this challenge. And those who come after us will say the Britons of this generation were as strong as any, that the attributes of self-discipline, of quiet, good-humoured resolve, and of fellow feeling still characterise this country. The pride in who we are is not a part of our past. It defines our present and our future. The moments when the United Kingdom has come together to applaud its care and essential workers will be remembered as an expression of our national spirit. And its symbol will be the rainbows drawn by children. Across the Commonwealth and around the world, we have seen heartwarming stories of people coming together to help others, be it through delivering food parcels and medicines checking on neighbours, or converting businesses to help the relief effort. And though self-isolating may at times be hard, many people of all faiths and of none are discovering that it presents an opportunity to slow down, pause and reflect in prayer or meditation. It reminds me of the very first broadcast I made in 1940 helped by my sister. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away for their own safety. Today, once again, many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now as then, we know deep down that it is the right thing to do. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavor, using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes to you all.